you dedicate those first 18 years of parenting to prepping your child for adulthood and you just hope to equip them with all they need to enter the next chapter with confidence. Well, my next guest believes that the best thing you can provide your kid is a sense of accountability. Psychologist Dr. Tom Golightly joins me with how parents can do just that. And you know, the school year just started, but for high school seniors, is it too late? <laughs> like, is it too late? Can we still help them as they go out into I the world? I sensed a little panic in your question. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a perfect time to do it. And actually, that last little part of brain development that goes down is the part of the brain that kind of links choices and consequences together, which is why it's, it's a really good time to kind of not double down necessarily, but continue some of those lessons. And from our experience having two seniors in our past and, and one current, uh, there have been some pretty big lessons learned that year. So it's a good time to kind of step up and, and continue continue that parenting model. And I just think accountability may not be something that's at the top of every parent's list, but you've got five things you're saying <laughs> we can do to help with accountability in these kids. And you said the first thing is uh, look in the mirror. Yeah, okay. which is not fun. And I own that that's hard for me to do. But we have to kind of ask, how are we contributing to this dynamic? What is it that we might be saving them from? What is it that we might have set up so that we are not able to, or, or that, that we might be contributing to some of why they're not picking up the ball themselves and being accountable to teachers, bosses, to, to other people. And, and so it's tough to kind of ask that question, but we can get some real good answers. But part two to that is once we find something out, we can own it with our kid and sit down and say, I'm going to be more responsible. I'm going to do this X, Y, and Z. And then you're doing as you want them to do. And kids are much more likely to do as you do, not as you tell them to do. So we can model that accountability a little bit. Okay, so after we look in the mirror, you say the next one is that we need to be calm. Calm is better than tense. That's kind of a duh, yeah. right? But uh, a lot of times we're saying we're going to be more accountable when we're in the heat of a moment. We've caught them in some difficulty, and so we're fired up, and it's like, that's it. We're going to be more accountable, or, or here are the rules. Here's, here's what we got. When in, they're actually much more likely to internalize it in a moment of calm than they are when we're upset. So you can kind of revisit this thing as we kind of you know, be factual and, and just uh, be able to kind of have that conversation in, in a calm manner. They're much more likely to internalize that, that I lesson. I know, when you're heated, maybe just make a mental note, like exactly. let's talk about this tomorrow. Yeah, come back to it. We're gonna circle back to this. It's the phrase that everyone loves right now. Circle so. back, that's right. <laughs> okay, and the next one is focusing on what they can do. Why, are we doing the opposite most often? A lot of times when we set structure, we're saying don't do this, don't do that. When we invite and flip, flip the coin a little bit and invite like, what can we do? Okay, well within these boundaries, there's still a lot of freedom of movement. And what the, there's two things that, that this does. One, it helps them feel a lot less stuck. We all feel a little under our parents' thumb. I remember that as, as a teenager. And it's saying, hey, we don't want you to feel pressured, right? But let's, let's see what you can do. And the second thing it does is it allows us to negotiate a little bit. Let's let them, they'll, they'll internalize some of these structures if we allow them to have a bit of a say, especially later on in adolescence. It's like, here's what we're okay with, here's what we're not okay with. Let's kind of come to an agreement together. Could you give me kind of an example of when that would come into play? I'm just trying to wrap my head around I know I do tell my kids I can't, they can't do things a lot of times, sure. but what is an example of when I can switch that around? Well, a discussion we just had with my senior in high school is uh, school nights. <laughs> I know you think you're an adult and, it's, and you think you can be fine to stay out as late as you want on a school night, but we're, this is what we got. Here's our structure. Here's what you can do. We're willing to let you do this. And when you're working, of course, you know, if you have a shift that's late, that's, that's an exception, uh, but, but let's talk about this. Like what's important to you? What would be a good time? What's going on? Why is it that you want those hours, those nights? And we can make some exceptions for school events and whatever, but you know, just be flexible instead of this is when we're going mm. to bed. It, it might be a, a little bit of a, it, it, they'll take more responsibility and ownership of the structure if they're involved. Okay, I like that. So your next one is talking about letting natural consequences do the work. I know that a lot of parents sweep in and make sure there aren't consequences for their kids, <laughs> exactly. especially like in school things. So mm -hmm. talk to me about the importance of this. So it's really important in two ways that we, that we just let 
the natural consequences work. You know, for example, um, it, someone is driving poorly, makes a poor decision while driving, wrecks the car, the car is not drivable. That's, that's a pretty steep consequence for a teenager. I don't have to come in and say, okay, well, this is the other thing we're gonna do to you. The not driving part is often enough. I don't have to add into that. So just let that work on the child and that, that tends, to be, tends to be enough. Uh, the other thing is we do kind of save. Uh, so we, we try to kind of take them out of that responsibility. And, and my dad was always very upfront with us growing up. He said, you go to jail, you're staying the night and I'm not bailing you out. And, and now he wasn't gonna just leave us to, to, to be helpless. But at the same time, he's saying there's a consequence. If you end up there, you did something to get there, so I'm gonna let you think about that and stew with that a little bit. Now, we, we of course wanna help and don't want them to flail, but at the same time, don't save them from those natural consequences, just let them be, but we also don't have to add anything onto those. Those consequences are just gonna be enough. Okay, I like that because I think sometimes we, again, we're not calm, mm -hmm. and so we like to add a little <laughs> extra on there. Yeah, well, Amy, I know all this stuff, I'm still not calm, so it's okay, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> okay, well, good to know you're not perfect. <laughs> Your last one may be just another duh one, but we have to stick with it. That can be hard. This is really tough. A lot of times we wanna let just little things slide or just give a little bit, but that consistency and that persistence, those are really paramount in, in parenting. We've got to really set choices and consequences. And, and, and as we learn, if we get a little bit on that, they start to detach the choice and the consequence. Uh, but also, uh, it's really, really important to stay consistent. And, and if a child is guessing, it's an anxious kind of guessing. Will, will they, won't they? And, and then if we know the structure and we know what's going on, it's a lot easier to be accountable for that. And you think of you know, work environments where bosses are saying, no, here's what we expect of you, and this is what we're gonna be accountable for. Kind of mimic that in the home, and you, you're, you're sure to kind of develop that sense of responsibility where they won't, they won't be nervous about what's coming. Yeah, and it sets them up for success in their future endeavors. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. Thanks, that was Amy. great.